Hey. Hey, Leo. You're in your car again. I'm working. <laughs> <laughs> okay, no rest for the wicked, apparently. No. I was no. hoping you would schedule a time, you know, when you're in front of a computer, relaxed, and we can have a proper conversation. Uh, I don't care if it's 10 o'clock or midnight. I'd rather do that than uh, than do this. But that's fine for now. Uh, what were your thoughts on our last conversation? What would you like to see happen? Uh, so as far as talking about the business, then the business to grow, right? So I can only do so much by myself, right? I only know so much, so I can only go so far. I need a mentor. I need somebody that has done more than I have and can mentor me. So that's really what I'm I'm looking for. I feel like that's what you offer. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, well, it's one of it the phases. Like. It's one of the phases that I offer. Um, right. Uh, I mean, it's the least, I don't want to say productive, but it's the least return on investment. So, I mean, if that's what you want, that that's fine. You can certainly start small and grow, grow big. Um, I, I like I said, I, I don't hide the fact that I like your concept. I like your concept at a higher level. I don't like your current concept. I'm thinking way ahead of you. I agree. Okay. Right. So, and I like that. And I would, you know, I would welcome a partnership if you would consider that. If not, that's fine too. So that's how much I believe in the concept, in the higher level concept. So I'll, I'll leave that to you. So in order to get more business in, I mean, you have to, it doesn't matter the fact that you're working with your hands or what your product is or your services. It doesn't matter. At this point, it doesn't matter. Because you need to focus and design the business side of the business. The product, or in this case, the service, is about 10% of the overall business blueprint. So I'm not going to question your service. Obviously, you're the expert at finding electrical shorts. So you are the expert on the product or service side. Okay. But that's not the problem. Okay. Because mm -hmm. obviously you have good reviews. You're doing a good job. You're getting repeat work. You know, that's not the problem. The problem right. is on the business side of the business. Right. Correct. So yep. you need, uh, you know, uh, a business blueprint, uh, branding, differentiation, and you need a waiting list of clients who you know want to give you money. And you need to have a right. waiting list of employees that want to come and work for you. Correct. That's all on the business side of the business. Correct. Okay. And that's what we do. That's what we are the experts at. And because of that, we've only had two failures in, in 40 years. When there is a 96% failure rate before COVID. Okay, so that's what we do. So let's talk about different levels. As, as I mentioned before, we have the advisory level, $500, $2,500 a month. I don't think you need $2,500 a month. I, can, I think you can easily start with $500 a month. Assuming, okay, here's the big assumption. Assuming you have the capacity to do the stuff that you need to do, okay? Like I said before, and people don't understand how much work that is. Before you launch your business, you got to build the Empire State Building. Okay. Or at least in your case, a custom house, a custom home. Before okay. you launch your business. Okay. You got to build the business blueprint, the branding, differentiation, you know, the the trusted foundation, the followers, the re trust relationships, you know, and all the other 33 tools. Now, what you're trying to do is not easy because now you've, you've launched your airplane, you're flying your airplane, 
but now you're trying to build the airplane and fly the airplane while it's up in the air. It's not easy. Right. Okay. It's not easy. So whether I'm advising you or I'm a partner with you, while we're designing the business blueprint, someone needs to do the the stuff you should have been doing for the past five years before you launched the business, the organic marketing, okay? The relationship building, right? And we need to find out who the stepping stone relationships are, just like the example I gave you about the painting business and his stepping stone relationships are real estate agents. And I've tried to expand them into interior designers and architects and so on. He says, I don't care. I don't want to grow. I'm happy where, where I am. I don't want to grow one more penny. Okay. So he stays and he controls his growth at $5 million. You know, new real estate agents want to deal with him. He says, I'm sorry. I just do not have the capacity. Okay. Okay. But someone needs to do the work. So whether I'm a partner or not, uh, and if I was a partner, I would probably put in $100,000 into it because that foundation under the company has to be built. That Empire State Building has to be built in, in order to grow on it. Okay. So right. the first thing we would do is hire three virtual assistants to do the online marketing that you should have done. Okay. That you don't have okay. time to do. Okay. And at the okay. same time, we're building the business blueprint and doing everything else. Okay. So, and as far as, go ahead. As far as the, uh, I guess it broke my pen. Um, business blueprint. What is what is all included in that in that business? Blueprint? It's well, it, it's a, like a business usually, plan. No, no, not a business plan. No. Okay. No. The opposite of a business plan, because a business plan is loosey-goosey, okay? A business plan allows 96% of companies to fail, so not a business plan. Because a business plan, most people think, okay, uh, we're, you know, we have an idea of the product and the service and the type of marketing we want to do, so let's just launch and figure out how the market's going to respond, then we're going to adjust, OK, to me, that's the equivalent of going to a homeless person and asking for financial advice. Okay. Right. I got you. Yeah, I got you. OK, yeah. please don't take notes. I'm recording. I'll send it to you. OK, stay with me. Got gotcha. you. Thank you. <laughs> so the reason why I say that is because that's what people do when they launch. They usually launch to the wrong client. OK, uh, a lot of times when people launch, let's say, painting businesses, renovation businesses or so on, the first place right. they're going to go is either Facebook groups or uh, Craigslist or in Canada, it's called Kijiji. OK, on Craigslist and Facebook groups, if people are looking for a service, they're shopping for price. Right. OK, they want the cheapest yep. price possible. And that's why right. they get 15 or 20 quotes <clears throat> because they're shopping for price. So if you're going to the wrong client who's shopping for price for their advice, mm -hmm. that's going to be the opposite of what, you know, a person who lives in a $5 million or $40 million home is going to want, right? So you're designing your business upside down for the wrong client. And when you launch, the right client will see an upside down company and say, I don't want to work with that company. And now you're pushing all the profitable clients away. Okay. That's why I don't believe in business plans because they create a 96% failure rate. Okay. What we create is rigid. It's not flexible. It's rigid. When you create, uh, when an architect creates a, a blueprint for a five bedroom, 10,000 square foot house, it's not up for your interpretation if you're the electrician, right? It doesn't mm -hmm. ask for your opinion. It says, we want an outlet here, place a freaking outlet here. I don't care what you think, right? That's what yeah. a business blueprint looks like. 
Okay. It doesn't ask subcontractors for opinions. It doesn't ask your employees for their opinion. It says, here's what you do. Okay. Right. I mean, I, okay. I get that. So it's, ba it's based off of things that work. Not based off of an assumption, as a plan would be more based off of assumption than right. off of facts. Okay. So yeah. off of an investment like that, off of off of a say a hundred thousand dollar investment, what else goes into a business other than just marketing, branding, three virtual well, assistants? Well, that's you know that's like saying Leo, explain to me you know what I would learn in the five year university degree. Now you're asking me, what have you learned in the past 40 years in this, you know, um, keep in mind, we can go very superficial in these conversations, you know, to design a business blueprint can take three to six months. Okay. Okay. So, and, and you're, you're dealing with every aspect of your business. You know, how do you attract your clients? Who are your clients? Where, where are you going to find them? How are we going to attract them in a cost efficient way? Right. Do we sell to them or do we build trusted relationships based on their interests? Right. The chances of people, as an example, and I'm spitballing here because, you know, this is a fairly new road because, you know, uh, RVs are not our core competency. Okay. But people who um, travel in RVs, chances are, they play uh, golf, right? I would say a high percentage of them will play golf, correct? A high percentage good of amount, them- A good amount of them do. Yeah, a high percentage of them will play tennis. Some of them will have a little dog traveling with them. Most do have animals, correct. Right? So it's reaching them through their interests to create relationships uh, through those interests where they feel we're not trying to sell them anything. Then we say, by the way, where do you service your RV? That's a beautiful RV, right? After a couple of weeks of building that relationship, all right, then you start turning the conversation over to where you want the conversation to go. Then it becomes a third party endorsement. It's not you speaking. It's, you know, there's this uh, cult guy who does, who is an expert at figuring out electronic problems. Right? So it becomes a third party endorsement. Uh, to give you an example, let's say that um, I'm an interior designer. And do you know who Frank Lloyd Wright is? World, no. the world's most famous architect. Okay. Okay. If Frank Lloyd Wright said the only interior designer that I ever trust on my projects are Leo, that's a third-party right. endorsement. Okay. Right. So, and that's that's how we build these trusted relationships is a lot of third-party endorsements. Because if you stand on the soapbox and say I'm the best whatever we are going to say who cares you're bragging i don't believe you right? right but if you know 20 third parties say the same thing that's a different story right right and, and a lot of the rv industry as far as uh even my my referrals they are mostly word of mouth um the rv community is a very tight-knit community uh, especially at the parks at the parks they even have you know they have their own special um, Facebook groups just for the people that are staying there. Um, so it's very tight knit. So if anything happens, you know, if someone does good work, it automatically goes in there. If someone feels like they got screwed over, it automatically goes in there. It is um, probably one of the tightest communities I've ever seen in my life. So you have to tread tread lightly and and be good. Yep. And, and, Sorry, you're breaking up. You're 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 showing white, but you're breaking up. So so cl uh, customer service is extremely important, right? One hundred percent. Yeah. Now you're red. 
So, um, I'm okay, ready. So, yeah, you're red. Your internet connection is uh, not good. Um, oh. So one of the things, one of the first things, if I was advising you, one of the first things we would do is is obviously hire some people to get the work done that you haven't done yet, that you should do, such as the VAs, virtual assistants, so social media managers. Um, right get that done and then i would start doing branding and marketing to make sure one dollar spent on marketing gives you a ten dollar return or at least a five dollar return right without branding you're going to be lucky if you get one for one so trading dollars is not is not good what are your thoughts so you need to come up with a marketing budget um, is that feasible? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I can figure, figure out a, a marketing budget for sure. Um, what, what ends up happening, Leo, is, um, the more work I do, the more referrals I get. And I will get overloaded and I can have that done within a month. I can, I can be overloaded with work in about a month. Um, but what happens with the overflow? What happens with all that stuff? I don't have another employee, nor do I know how I have the know-how to even get into hiring another employee. Um, you know, and I think that's something huge here, but I, I mean, if you do marketing, right? That brings in clients. I'll get overloaded with clients fast. I don't know. I don't know if you've ever seen that, how the that's RV industry a good is, problem, it's right? fast. That's it is a good, good problem. problem, right? But I need, it's going to be manpower is going to be needed fast. It's, it's going to be needed fast. It's, it's not right. a joke. Okay. So let's use that roofing example that I gave you the last time we talked where we tripled the roofing company's uh, workforce. Right. Can you imagine tripling going from seven uh, employees to nearly 30 employees? Um, that's pretty scary. Right. But what happens is. What happens is you start marketing, then you increase a couple of your employees, you increase the marketing, you bring on a couple more employees. You increase the marketing. You bring on a couple more employees, right? It's not something that you're, you're doing in a vacuum. You're not blasting the marketing. All of a sudden, you get 50 clients and, you know, you have to gauge because in order to start, let's say, a pay-per-click campaign, you already know if we spend X number of dollars, we should get X number of leads, right? And if we know what your closing ratio is, and we know we're going to close 10%, 30%, 50%, whatever it is, we can do the math, right? And when you have three or four people on standby, and we need to figure out what type of products do we want to promote, right? Uh, depending on the people you have on standby, do you want to start doing old changes? Do you want to start detailing these RVs? Because I think that might be good business. You would want to start doing old changes. You want to start doing, you know, tire rotations. You know, what is it you want to do to these things? Because those are the things that we are going to promote, right? And the more you offer them, I, I would rather see, you know, a one-stop type service, right? If you can't do the job, you have a subcontractor that can do it, right? Whether it's, you know, right. compressions on the engine or whatever it is, or new tires, right? If you don't supply new tires, you you got to have a, a dealer to say, okay, my guy was ready to see you tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock for the new tires, right? Or windshield wipers or whatever can break down. You've got to be, if I were in your shoes, I would want to be the, the one call. You just call me, I fix it. It has to do with your RV, I fix it, okay? I would even have a body guy because someone's going to ding the side or scratch the side or, or whatever, right? 
you want to have a guy, like I said, you, you want to have at least 50 or 100 people in your trusted circle because all they do is email you, you have a guy, you make an appointment or your people make an appointment and it's solved. That's what I would do. But you got to have those trusted people and you, you need to know they're going to fall on the train tracks because if they make a promise, they have to over deliver. Those are the type of people you need because if you're not, if you're going to over promise, not deliver, it's not going to work. Right. And if they say, you know, uh, can you have your RV here tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock? It means they're ready, ready for you at 10 o'clock. And if they say it's going to be done by five, then, you know, unless something major happens, it should be done at five. Or tell them it's going to be done the following morning and say, good news, we worked overtime, it's ready today at five. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, like, like I was telling you yesterday, um, chassis work is not a thing um, from dealerships. No, no dealership does chassis work. Um, so if you have like a motor home, um, if it's a Ford chassis, they don't touch the engine, they don't touch the brakes and most of them don't touch tires. Right. Um, so that's what I came from. So most of the time I'm doing all electrical and such. So I've had people call me probably about four people have called me in the past two weeks that did need chassis work. And I, um, I sent them to some pretty good people. Um, I, I see what you're saying about the, uh, kind of have all specific people and um that makes and, a lot of sense yeah um, and, and you got to go to these people and say i'm going to refer you you know over the next 12 months i'm going to refer you 200 people you have yeah. to be my go-to guy for chassis work or, or tire work or whatever it is because mm -hmm. you let me down once you know i have to find somebody else there has yeah, to be a good it, reason why you let me down, right? So if you promised them a lot of work, they're going to be loyal to you. Right. Would you also set up some type of a deal where they give you 10% back? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. 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 You have to make a living. Yeah. Yeah. And people with, you know, half a million dollar RVs are not going to care if you charge them 85 or $150 an hour. They don't care. They want to get back on the road. Yeah. Right. Right. That's right. And by the way, I have um, I, I was hoping to look at our domains. As I mentioned, we have about 10,000 domain names pre-registered and aging, I was hoping to get a chance to go through the list, but going through 10,000 names is not easy. And, you know, uh, my VA oh, hasn't sure. had a chance to do that, but I'm sure mm -hmm. we have some, uh, some great names that you could use to elevate your, your company, because I'm pretty sure I didn't like your company name. What was your company? No, name? it's just my name. It's just my last name. It's Robinson. Okay. Yeah. Right. And you can't sell that business, right? Right. And most of the time we set up a business like this with the intention of selling that business within three to five years, right? So in five right. years time, if you get an offer, you can choose to take it or leave it, but it's nice to have yeah. choices, right? Right. So. Any other questions right now? I've got another call in three and a half minutes. You can think about this, schedule another call for tomorrow. You know, I I want to make sure that you're comfortable going forward. If you want to go forward on a purely advisory level, that's fine. Um, you know, we can start with 500 or a thousand a month um, and go from there. Um, and I can, I can either hire because my people are overloaded, you know, it, it, it's not that I can lend you a couple of people to do the work, but you need full-time work. You need to 
you know, you need to have, you know, 10,000, 50,000 TikTok followers. You need to have, you know, uh, you need to join 200 Facebook groups. You need, you need to do a lot of work. We need websites. We need content for the websites. We need to create videos. We need, we need a million things. If, if we hired 30 people, I could keep them busy and the amount of work that needs to be done for you. Okay. Um, <laughs> so, I mean, what are, what are we looking at if it was more than just advisory? You know? Well, there's the advisory and the done-for-you program. And the top one is the CEO, interim CEO program, which is $100,000 a year. But that's where you would get the most results. But I'm not sure that one works for you because... Because generally, that's for aggressive people, right? And when you say, Leo, you know, I'm concerned about getting too much business, that's the opposite of aggressive people. Because the call that I had this morning, um, he said, I don't care. I'll just hire more people, right? I mean, I think there's there, there's obviously a lack of understanding between him and I then or that person and I um I don't know how to go about doing that so if I knew how to go about doing that then I probably I would have said the same exact thing like oh I just need to hire more people I don't know the process of this stuff that's why I'm I'm looking out for guidance you know right. is because I don't know how to do that stuff and I want to do it properly obviously if we went into a different domain name and everything we'd probably decompose my business itself and start a new one that'd probably be what would happen it would just probably make more sense to do it that way uh, so, well, and, and, and Cole, that's what I mean about brandy and differentiation. We need to find a proper name for you because I, I wouldn't advise you to grow Robertson RV repairs if that's what you're called. Right. I would right. not recommend putting a dime into that name because that's not a sellable name three years oh. or five years down the road. And it's going to cost you a lot of money to promote that name. People are not going to be attracted to that name because of the name. But when you have uh, the proper branding and differentiation, people will come to you, um, you know, in 10 or 20 at a time because of the name. Okay. So, if your biggest fear is is hiring employees, then maybe that should be our first step. Because if you had three or four people that say, yeah, Colt, I love this idea. When you get enough work, I'm there for you. I will put your projects ahead of my projects. Once you have three or four people like that to start with, and you already checked out their work, and you checked out the reviews, and you know where they are and they're trustworthy, they have good credit rating and, and all that, then you're going to feel a lot more comfortable about referring business to these people, correct? Correct. Okay. So maybe that should be our first step. So you are good at, uh, at electrical, diagnostic electrical, right? You want to keep all that work? Yeah, I mean, the only yeah, the only work that I, I kind of push towards other people is going to be the chassis work. The chassis you know? work. Uh, okay. Yeah, but don't forget you're not overloaded yet. Right? You're not, not working 16 hour days yet. Not currently. I was in January okay. and February. Okay. But um, I pulled back, but yes. Okay. But keep in mind you and I are going to have, you know, uh a come to Jesus type conversations. Okay. Let's say, let's say tomorrow, let's say you and I are partners. Okay. And a client calls tomorrow and says, I need, you know, my electric, your electronics on my RV are going haywire. I don't know what's going on. You and I, anybody can fix it. Your instinct is going to be to do what? I'll be right there, right? That's your instinct. Or I can be there tomorrow morning at seven. Yep. 
what are my instincts? My instincts are going to be, who is the subcontractor that we have that has proven himself? And can he be there at seven o'clock tomorrow? Right? Which keeps you free to do the important stuff. Fixing that RV is worth what to you? You said $300? Your, that's your average yeah. ticket? Yeah. Okay, so that's worth, that's worth $300 to you. Okay. But if you work in the business and we grow the business to 10 million, what's the value of your time is now worth a hell of a lot more than $300 for three hours work. Uh, let's say $100 an hour, right? Your your time working in the business is worth about $1,000 an hour. Mine is about $1,500 an hour because I bill out at $1,500 when we're designing business blueprints. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. I mean, until we have, you know, 10 clients that, you know, need your time it, it's not a big deal but when it comes time where you should be delegating instead of doing the work yourself because once we have the three or four or five or ten subcontractors your job is to make sure they keep busy then that way you're getting 10 percent from each of these projects okay then eventually okay, okay. You just answered a question, I think. So it was, you were talking about subcontracting. I was like, well, if he's subcontracting all these jobs out, then how is he making money? But you're saying that's, you're well, at that point in time, you're working on your branding and your marketing. So you're subcontracting all those jobs out to where you're getting whatever, 20 jobs a day, but they're all subcontracted out. Once you get to that point and it's consistent, then you work on employees. Well, I, I employees mean- to do that. You you can work on employees or subcontractor model. I mean, you don't uh, you whichever way you choose, it doesn't matter. The point is, you're paying an employee eighty five dollars an hour, and you're you know charging him out at two hundred dollars an hour. So it's the margins yeah. you're working with. Whether it's an employee or subcontractor, it doesn't matter. It's the margins that you you you're concerned about. Right. It's the margins and the testimonials that you want. The testimonials are more important than the margins. So that's that's my other question. So if, if you're talking testimonials and you have your business name and you're Google, but you're subcontracting out, then those reviews go towards that no, subcontractor. No, no, because they're they're operating under your name. Okay. These, okay. Yeah, these subcontractors, as far as the client is concerned, they are your employees. How you do the paperwork internally doesn't matter, right? The only problem is when they wear your uniform, the subcontractor model can backfire on you in terms yep. of back taxes and stuff. So ideally, they are employees because they're going to wear your uniform, okay? And even the mobile shops should be converted RVs with a huge brand on the side. Because again, you're promoting the RV lifestyle and you should show up on the job site or where they broke down with an RV. Okay. Yeah. Because it, it, it amplifies the brand or you're, or you're showing up with you know, a heavy tow truck. Again, ca carrying the brand. Yeah. Okay. I mean, the 1099ing seems like, because I've seen some 1099 employees before, and I've heard my friends that run 1099, they're not technically your employees. Right. So they're kind of on their own time and they don't show up on time. Um, and that could be a major problem. It can you know? be, but, but that's not, that's a culture and that's a business blueprint problem. It means you haven't motivated them. It means they don't see the value in working with you if they don't show up on time. That's another problem. Okay. That's yeah. another problem. But when they see the next 10 jobs or the next 100 jobs coming from you and they've, start mar they've stopped marketing, they've stopped advertising, they've stopped doing everything else, now they're dependent on you, trust me, they're going to be closer to being on time. They're never going to be perfect because they are not you. They don't own the business, 
but they own their business and they're dependent on you. And if you say, hey, you know, this is the third time you're late this week or this month, if this continues, you know, you're going to get off the number one spot and somebody else is going to take over the number one spot in terms of chassis, in terms of tires, in terms of whatever, right? Yeah. When they know they can be replaced, they're going to be on time. Unless, you know, it's legitimate. Yeah. Okay. And are, are you saying like, so they would be 1099, but you would 1099, like, I would need technicians as well. So you would 1099 your own technicians or you'd make them hourly as well? Make them right. hourly. Like We are we are having the wrong conversation. Okay. Um, it, it really doesn't matter. Um, doesn't matter. When... Because it really doesn't matter. If you prefer to have employees, employees are better because you can motivate them. They're dependent on you. They don't run the side business. They don't do any of that. But it's easier to control your costs with subcontractors as opposed to employees. Okay. Okay. Because if you okay. budget a job, unless these are highly motivated people, and you know this is where you need to be the expert to have expertise at, it's not working with your hands. It's learning how to motivate and engage employees. These employees need to be working for a higher power, a higher purpose. It, it can't be a job to them. It has to be a calling, right? And that's where branding and differentiation comes in. This is where the promises come in, right? And if you say, Fred, I know you've only been with us for, for a month, but we, you know, I, I would invite you to look at our advanced management training program so you can become a supervisor. And when you become a supervisor, then you become a manager. And once you're at the management level, at that point, you may consider, you know, buying a franchise from us. And when you're at the management level, we might even finance you to become a franchise for us. So they're always working for something higher than what they currently have. Okay. Again, yeah. I'm seeing this as a franchise model because, right. you know, you, you need to have franchises all over North America because no matter where your client goes, if he's going to Arizona next, oh, don't forget to call Bob if you run into trouble. Here's his contact information, right? So, and you're handing off between that point and his point, halfway point, you know, he goes to Bob before the halfway point. He's your responsibility, right? <clears throat> and you're handing it off from franchisee to franchisee, depending on where he's closest. But someone right. is always looking after that client. That client needs to feel that there's a hand on his shoulder saying, hey, Fred, don't worry about it. Or Mr. Jones, don't worry about it. We've got you. No matter where you go, send us your itinerary. So if you break down your cell phone, you get hijacked, you get whatever, we can follow up. If you don't fall in, if I don't see a report on Tuesday saying you have arrived safely, I'm going to follow up on you or our system will follow up on you to make sure you are safe. Okay. And once they yeah. see that level of service, they're not going to go to anyone else. They're not. Okay. Because if if you look at if you treat them like you were they were your dad and and you, you want to make sure they're safe on the road, or you send out you know winter advisory alerts, please don't travel tomorrow. All right. So when you have that type of communication, they're not going to go anywhere else. Even if you increase your rates, they're not going to go anywhere else. Does that make sense? Yeah, 100%. Okay. So when you have 100%. franchisees all over North America, no matter where they go, someone's looking after them. And that's how you're going to take market share. That's how you're going to grow your company to $100 million. Okay. 
So why don't you give that some thought and uh, schedule another call for tomorrow? I was should have been somewhere else at 10 minutes ago, but I enjoyed this conversation. Let's talk again soon, tomorrow. Sounds good. I'll talk to you later. Thank you. All right, bye.